We talked about earlier how Cyberpunk is essentially the most hyped game in recent memory for virtually everyone here. It has a lot to live up to, but there's also some weird members of the media, some woke members of the media who have an agenda that have been targeting this since day one, that want to make everything into a controversy. And that's exactly what we're seeing in the lead up to Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I have this article here from Polygon. I'm using the Wayback Machine because fuck these people. I'm not going to give her any clicks. <laughs> it sucks that Cyberpunk 2077's edgelord marketing worked so well. CD Projekt Red sure has got everybody talking about this game. Um, now, this is written by Stacey Henley. Uh, I, I wanted to know more about... Oh, oh God. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I wanted to know more about her, she, her. Uh, so I went to her profile. Uh, Stacey Henley right there. I, ironically, right before she writes this article, she has, she has this to say. I have no issue with influencers getting cyberpunk gear or any of the games gear for that matter. The issue is code. Are only as finite as the publishers say they are. Influencers getting codes isn't a problem. It's that reviewers and guide writers aren't. Uh, and then later on. But she uh, ain't no reviewer. What the what's the difference between an influencer and a reviewer? <laughs> other than the fact that you've got a shitty company whose website you post your stuff on. <laughs> and then after she posts her article, I'm not reviewing Cyberpunk 2077. I would have liked to have, but I get why I'm not on it. Hoping to have at least one feature on it post-launch though. So she, she's a little butthurt about not getting any codes. How shocking that someone with 668 fucking, 686 oh, no. now followers <laughs> uh, didn't get a code for Cyberpunk 2077. Hey, oh go God. back, go back, go back to the uh to the to that tweet because there's a response under there that's hilarious. It's looking uh, no, no, better no, no, than no. your career after that article. No, 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 no. The uh the one where she said she's not gonna review it. Somebody said, I see Stacy, but I hear Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, but but these are the people that are complaining uh, about this. And it, it goes on and brings up the same shit that we've heard time after time. Basically, what they're saying is they're marketing to the, the edgy crowd. When in reality, what, what they mean to say is they're marketing it to normal people. They're marketing it to people that aren't these nut jobs, that don't look at everything and get offended over identity politics. They're, they're even... put they're, there is this is the most inclusive game that has been seen maybe ever with what you can do with your character and how you can play this game whatever way you want but that's not enough for these people they're still bringing up this poster right mix it up uh with the massive penis uh that's a on glorious this penis that's a bbc right there <laughs> I, uh, she she complains <laughs> that you could see the veins in it uh, <laughs> what well, news flash about hard penises that's the thing. You can see veins. <laughs> and Mark knows all about hard penis. I know penis. all about hard penis. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, she brings up she brings up the did you assume my gender joke saying that it's it, – she's basically saying they're, they're whistling to the alt-right. Again, that's what this entire narrative has been about because cyberpunk, the way it has been marketed, they are trying to get more in tune with their audience, which, again, the normal audience. Uh, what do you guys make all this bullshit? This is what we're saying before. Like, they were going hard, you know, Last of Us game of the year. The game's not even out. But this isn't even out. They're bringing up posters in a game with no context, trying to say it's transphobic. They completely ignore the fact that the creator of Cyberpunk, not just the video game, but the creator of Cyberpunk, who, surprise, is a black man who comes out and says, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, this is my story. How dare you come in here and tell me how I got to portray mm -hmm. my stuff? Yep. I was really uh, glad to hear Michael Pont, Pont Smith. That's his name. Talk about how he's sick and tired of people feeling like they got to be offended for him. A lot of the people who are who are rallying against cyberpunk, like our resident uh, SJW here, uh, a lot of them have no idea that the person who created cyberpunk is a black guy. A lot of them have no idea that the person who created cyberpunk has been working with CD Projekt Red to create the game. Has been giving them uh, his time as a consultant and helping them make sure that all the lore is lined up with how the game is being structured. And <clears throat> these things are totally a part of the world that he created. CD Projekt Red didn't just come up with an idea to do something like that out of thin air. They actually have a lore that backs up a lot of the visual uh, visual style that, that that is included in the game. And they're doing his 
his creation as much as much justice as one could possibly expect uh, when you talk about respecting, you know, the 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 core of a game's principles. This was a tabletop game before it was ever considered to be a video game. And CD Projekt Red is bringing that to life. So people who don't understand the actual history of the game shouldn't really be really be concerned with with complaining about visual cues that they don't seem to like. Like that's bullshit to me. Well, yeah, it's just like anything else. It's, it's they, uh, they they're so busy being mad that they they can't even understand <laughs> that they're they're battling against something they've claimed that they've wanted the whole time because they're not really interested in these things. Um, they're not interested in black voices mattering because if you were, then you would, you know, you would be appreciative that there's a black man who's behind this, this a entire man creation being brought yeah. to the world. And it's exactly. likely going to be the biggest game of like, like Ryan said, the most recent memory. This is going to be, I mean, honestly, this is going to be, this is going to be as big as GTA as GTA GTA as Witcher three, like Witcher three, by and large, is considered one of the best games of the last at least decade. Yeah, and this is and, a, and a GTA sells and GTA sell like Grand Theft Auto. Uh, the most recent GTA is still it's still one of the most it's viewed games most on Twitch. Game. It's yeah. absolutely insane how many copies and and Cyberpunk is going to be right there. Could it even you know? Could it surpass GTA in some ways? Possibly. I mean, but the fact that it's even in that discussion just kind of shows how big this is because regardless of your opinion of GTA, I'm not the biggest GTA fan myself, but you can't deny how huge those games are. I mean, those are those are all time, you know, those huge are games. system so, sellers. That's what yeah, those are. Those are, gener those are generational games. And uh, this game is taking things to, and I think Ryan said it best. I mean, this is probably, if you really want to get into the, to the, representation side of things and the inclusion side of things like this is probably the most diverse game you, you can let you operate however the fuck you want you could be a trans you could be yeah. a non-binary you could be a male a female i mean shoot can you imagine big oots with some dreads and some titties just boom, boom blah, blah. <laughs> that, that, that might be my character that might be what i do you have to imagine it <laughs> yeah you can even have abby in the game if you want <laughs> I you can't know, it, wait to see what the hell Lethal is going to create. I can't wait to see that. That's going to that's going to oh, be dude, a treat right there. You pretty much saw my character with the black dude that they got in the uh, in the early uh, trailers and stuff that they showed. I'm gonna have somebody. I'm gonna be a kingpin motherfucker in mine. Y'all just watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be selling spice all over the galaxy. <laughs> the thing is, it, the reason that cyberpunk is so hyped, the reason that so many people are talking about it, is not because they make fun of trans people or whatever this person is saying. It's not because they're. She even says they're appealing to Elon Musk fanboys. The reason uh -huh. that it's so hyped, the reason it's so hyped, is because Witcher Three was an incredible success. That is the reason. Witcher Three was incredible, and they've been working on this game and hyping this game since then. Since that is why we even came out too. Yeah, they exactly. started, started in 2012. Yeah. 2012, yeah. I think they started development on this. As soon as Witcher 3 came out, people loved it. And then they said, just wait to what we have in store for you next. CD Projekt Red is respected by a lot of people because of what they've done before. That is why people are excited. Not because they're appealing to edgy goth kids, as Jeremy would say, but yep. because <laughs> they're appealing to everyone. Yeah, I... Uh... I really did. Uh, get, I got hammered on that one video. That's probably the worst video I've, I've made on this channel where I tried to call them out for pandering. And uh, I got roasted pretty bad on it, even though Geeks and Gamers is a echo chamber and never disagrees with Jeremy. Um, but I did. I got roasted on that video pretty bad. People still bring that video up to this day. You can um, uh, you, you I mean, hold on to like Smudcast for it or something like that or one of the... Uh, like um, or South podcast, South Paul, South Paul, yeah, South Paul. I, I got. I, I saw that up and I was like, oh my god, Jeremy, I wish you'd you'd run it by <laughs> me before you posted that video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, these, I went these, on there. These guys really have an unbelievable, unbelievable, ugh, oh, unbelievable amount of goodwill from the fans. I mean, can you think of another game where you wouldn't lose some steam if you had delayed the game almost a year? Marvel's Avengers. Well. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I I think that I think that there are uh, th there are some people that have blinders on concerning CD Projekt Red. That regardless of what they do, they're they're the gold standard. 
Um, I think there's a little bit of that out there. I think there's room for criticism for a couple of things they've said, a couple of things they didn't follow up on and uh, how they've handled this entire situation. And uh, ah, you're talking about the Twitter mix up with the with the oh, we're no more delays. And then, boom, they delay it. I'm not specifically talking about that, but I am talking about the way they handle the delay, the, the fact yeah. that they promised it to so many people and um, th the fact that they waited that long. The fact that I, I'm not quite sure that this game is actually ready or as ready as they want it to be on December 10th, or if it's a more so, they kind of have to put it out now. Regardless of whether they have it as, as how they wanted it to handle it, I don't know if their stock can handle a, another thing like we saw with that, that third delay that they had. I think there's some chinks in CDPR's armor, but I do think that they are by far and away the most consumer friendly and the best uh, developer out there right now. And the ones that keep in mind what fans actually want. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> well, I think you, uh, like some of the problems I think are also rooted in the fact that they're independently publishing this game. Uh, even for Witcher 3, they were working, I think, more closely with Warner Brothers Interactive for um, actually getting the game across the finish line. And I think they're running into some pipeline issues with like top level decision making to what's actually coming out on social media as far as news goes. And I still hold firm that like their biggest mistake, I think, was the second delay just being until November and maybe even the third delay just being until December. I think if they knew that they weren't going to hit that September release date, again, kick the can down the road like six months to a year, give yourself some time to really fix those problems. And I'm willing to bet a lot of it had to do with the fact that they're pretty much all working from home right now, which I'm sure was a big change to their workflow the, that they've been doing for the last seven <coughs> years on this game. But uh, I don't know. I still think I think the PC version is probably still going to turn out quite well. I think especially the base level consoles, though, like launch PS4 and Xbox One, not even Xbox One S um, will be the ones that have the biggest issues because they haven't even shown any of the base level console footage yet at all. Like we have no so idea how it going. got leaked. Oh, really? Just, how <laughs> Yeah. It's uh, probably pretty rough, but I mean, the good news is they're doing a free upgrade program. So if you buy Cyberpunk on PS4, or Xbox One now, and it's trash, you'll get your Xbox Series X or PS5 version for free. So yeah, well, whatever. I, I actually, on PlayStation Five. I actually got a question because I got the PC version and the PS4 version pre-ordered. Can I cancel the PS4 pre-order? -pre yeah, it's a pain in the ass, though. I did it for Last of Us 2. <laughs> Get on the phone like immediately after the podcast ends, and you might have it canceled by Thursday. Yeah, because I got to get that canceled because I think I I think I pre-ordered like the the one of the one of the up one of the I think it, no I didn't get the jacket one I got I think I got just the regular one, but I need to get that handled. Yeah, because I'm not going to play it on PS4. I'm going to play it all on PC. Yeah. Yeah, I think this this game, um, you know, Ryan, you know, has been you know following this pretty closely too. But if if this, if this game isn't if this game doesn't work good uh, uh, upon release, it's going to be massive. I mean, this is this is the problem. This is the the risk you run when you have this much hype. I can't imagine hey, how big got, the fallout will be. If you got a good PC, shit, you're gonna be all right. It's I got PS5. PS4. It's the PS4 and the. Uh... PS5. Yeah, it's, the, it's, the it's, PS5 will be running the PS4 version for at least the first part of the year because the PS5 and Xbox Series X like native versions aren't coming out until later. But your right. save progress will carry over and you'll get that upgrade for free. Just know that if it doesn't look super impressive and like a next-gen game when you're playing it next week on a PS5, it's because you're playing a PS4 game in a backwards compatibility mode. You're not really playing a native PS4 game. That being yeah. said... Ghost of Tsushima on PS5 looks fucking incredible. So, yeah, I mean, it really does. Yeah. It, it, it does look amazing. I, I think that, and that's the problem, is that the vast majority of players are going to have it on PS4 and Xbox. because yeah. But it, yeah. it's really hard to get any next-gen console right now, bottom line. Yeah, and I still know people who played Witcher 3 for like six hours on PS4 and were like, this game sucks because it kind of runs like trash on PS4. But I mean, other people push through that uh, poor performance and got to the good writing in Witcher 3 and still loved it. But I find that it's almost a 100% rule that anyone who tells me they hated Witcher 3 played it on a console. It may be a correlation, not causation thing, but I think it has something to do with it because that game looks a lot better when it's running at a decent frame rate. Oh, man. On PC, I mean, it still looks like one of the best games out on PC. If you play it on high, on, the, on its 4K settings, 
which yeah. I do. So, you know, it, it, it held up well for me. And then from start to finish, it was completely, you know, I was completely engrossed in the in, in the gameplay and the storytelling. I expect the same with Cyberpunk. And I, I'm a huge, like, I love this kind of environment, like that Cyberpunk style. I love that. I love, like, movies like Akira. It kind of yeah. follows in that vein. I mean, I really, really enjoy having something like that to play. And, and you know, it's going to be it's going to be incredible. I think even if it's not perfect, I don't expect the game to be perfect. But I know that from a story aspect, it's going to be it's going to be I, I damn, damn near as close as, as you can get. The story and the choices available to you, I think, are going to be the big selling points for the game. I think you're only setting yourself up to be disappointed by Cyberpunk if you're expecting an action game. If you're yeah. expecting it to be like a first person shooter, like Doom Eternal, or not gonna be even that. even a game like Grand Theft Auto, where like every single mission will have you firing guns or chasing in cars, it's probably not going to be that. Think more along the lines of like a Fallout game, and I think you'll be really impressed as opposed to thinking it's going to be GTA and being slightly disappointed. But I mean, uh, there, there were some people who had access to the what the first 16 hours, yeah, yeah and, and that, they said, and they said that they, they said they didn't even shoot a weapon until like six to eight hours in, so yeah. you know, it's I think there's gonna be a lot of people that get like pissed off I, because of that. a lot of people are gonna probably be blindsided by that a little bit, thinking, yeah. Wow, I thought I was gonna be playing an action game. Well. You're playing the prologue, and the prologue doesn't let, lend itself to just action. It's it's going to have a a lot of world building to do from the from the initial start of the storyline. So, you know, I'm, I, I, that, they were those impressions. They were also saying that you can go looking for trouble if you want to, but the main path of the story doesn't immediately throw you into oh yeah, now kill all these gangsters. It's yeah. it's more like deal with these gangsters however you want. Talk to them, hack their computers, or kill them all but you're not like forced to do any of that. But you're pretty weak in the beginning. You really have to level up your guys. So, so that's the thing. So jumping into a fight might not be a good call. Like, yeah. exactly. Uh, what about you, Lethal? What do you think about all this shit? I'm just looking forward to playing the game. Yeah. So, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> well, and so is everyone. And uh, December 10th or December 9th, I guess, December is really where we're going to actually get it. 7 p.m. Eastern is when it's launching. So, Ryan, for you, it's probably going to be 4 p.m. on it December um, December 9th. 9th. Is Lethal going to get early access? That's what no, I'm curious No, he's not. No, because it's, it's worldwide. Like same time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It won't be like we'll Call be of Duty or... or it won't be like Call of Duty where he he was ranked up. He was already first. level he was, thirty five. He was almost like a first prestige, on. and then every time we played with him, all the other people on the team was like, "Look at this fucking virgin." Uh, so. <laughs> Jeremy, for, for you, it'll be six p.m. So dinner dinner okay. time, your time. Then for me, it's and, seven. And, and again, uh, it's across, seven too. across all of our channels, uh, you know, whether it's our personal channels or the the you know geeks and gamers channels, we're gonna have a ton of coverage for the, of this game. It's gonna be wall to wall coverage we'll be utilizing gaming with geeks as well so like i said stay tuned to that channel and this one and uh twitch all over the place it's gonna be fun um all right well with that being said cyberpunk is coming and uh, i guess we'll see if the journalists will spurg out more when it eventually releases